Hey Board Game Maniacs, Maniac Rob here to bring you another exciting video. All the videos on this channel are exciting. Come on, you know it, I know it, we all know it, so let's just get on with it, shall we? Woohoo! That's right. In this video, we're doing actually, it's not a battle report, it's not an unboxing, it's another showcase video. I checked on the channel and it's been a long time since we actually did a showcase video. The last showcase video that we did was for Project Z by Warlord Games. So, hey, the end off the uh, 2018 season for Board Game Maniacs, we're doing none other than a showcase video. This showcase video has been a long time in development. It is none other than Fantasy Flight's Games Imperial Assault. That's right, it's a Star Wars showcase video. I'm excited because I love Star Wars. Fantasy Flight Games are awesome. So, pretty much it's exactly what it says. It's a showcase video. I finally, 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 after a long time, finished painting all of my Star Wars Imperial Assault miniatures in the build-up so that one day, or for a whole month, we may potentially be playing Star Wars Imperial Assault. So I am very super excited. I also have Star Wars Legion, the tabletop game too as well, also by Fantasy Flight Games, which we are going to play on the channel in the future. But right now, just to kick off the two thousand, the end, the kickoff of 2018 series for Board Game Maniacs, we're just going to show you all the little miniatures that I painted up, and we're not going to go over the stats or anything, simply because this is just a showcase video to show off what the miniatures could look like if you spent the time painting them. Just a spoiler alert, though, is I am no professional painter by no means, so. If you see any really badly painted miniatures, it's on me. I just painted them, hopefully the tabletop standards. I just want to show you what I painted so that we can end the 2018 season for Board Game Maniacs and move forward to the exciting new 2019 season for Board Game Maniacs. This is incredible. I'm excited for this. And let's go to the table. Let's look at the miniatures. Let's talk about the painting and everything else again. No technical painting, no technical, like, you should do this or that, because I really don't know, because I'm not a professional painter. Anyhow, let's go to the table and take a look at the miniatures. Remember, if you like this video, as well as other videos that are on our Board Game Maniacs YouTube channel, Twitch channel, Instagram, and Facebook, click the like, click the subscribe button so that you'll be notified when more videos become available onto our channel so that you can watch. Also remember, we are going to do a lot of live streaming in 2019 because this is the year for expansion and more playing for board game maniacs. Just a quick shout out before we do the showcase video. It's for Max Aggression Gaming. It is located in Niagara Falls, Ontario, Canada. You can go to maxaggressiongaming.com and you can see all of the stuff he has for sale as well as he does commission painting. These ones here, he did not do because they're nowhere near as good as what uh, Dan from Max Aggression Gaming does. So check them out. Don't forget, big shout out to as well. He gave me this mat, the uh, Imperial Assault official mat by Fancy Flight Games. He gave me that to showcase in this video. So thank you very much, Max Aggression Gaming. I appreciate it very much. Let's go a little closer and look at all the miniatures so that I can talk about how badly I painted them. What you see here is all of the heroes that I have for the Imperial Assault game. When I say all of the heroes that I have, there is probably two or three more expansions out by the time you view this video. But I never bought into everything yet. I'm still kind of working onto it. I bought into this game, Imperial Assault, probably I would say about a year ago, maybe a little more than a year ago. And I just finally got around to finishing the paint job and everything that I had. It was a lot. And plus, with Board Game Maniacs, scheduling and shooting more videos and, and you know, painting other miniatures that take precedence over this. It, it's been a long time coming, but I'm glad I finally did this. So this is all the heroes that I have. We're not going to go over every one of them in detail. I'm just going to pick out a couple of them, primarily this first row that you can see here because that is probably the most heroes that you're going to know from the Star Wars 
universe as in like the the movies so like Star Wars A New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi and then you're gonna have all of the other ones from like the expansions as well as like geez like the Star Wars universe is so large I can't really touch upon everything I'm a Star Wars fanatic I love Star Wars but I don't know everything about it I bought this game originally because I'm like hey do you know what I'm gonna buy this to play it not specifically onto the board game maniacs channel but you know i have everything all painted up i'm like you know what i'm going to play this on the board game maniac channel so you're going to see this in the future in 2019 so that you can see us play this game i may play solo i may play a cooperative mission with other players but i the, the main reason why i stopped i didn't play this Previously on the channel, number one, I didn't have all the miniatures painted, but the main reason because there was rumors and speculations going around that Fantasy Flight was actually going to release an app that will play the Imperial side or the, uh, the bad guy side as you want to say it. So when you're playing it, it's like, you know, Mansions of Madness, if everybody has played the Mansions of Madness game, where the AI of the app controls the tiles as well as the bad characters or the bad guys the imperial it's a matter of perception i guess but the empire i should say the empire player so that you can play it as in the solo mission or you can play it with friends and that's why i waited so long to put this on the channel so this is just the start so now i have all of the all of it painted that i want painted I'm going to start playing this onto the channel in the very near future. So let's look a closer shot at some of the heroes that you get. Now this may not be the core box, it could be the expansion box, but all in all this is everything I have for Imperial Assault that is painted as of now. Let's get this party started, shall we? So you can see here the Imperial Assault. I have to say these miniatures were a lot of fun to paint. It kind of brought me back to my childhood for when I first started watching Star Wars and I get hooked into that universe. It was just incredible. And again, I'm excited to play this game. So let's look at the first miniature I'm rambling on already. Oh boy. This is Princess Leia. Let's see if I can get in focus here. Again, the paint job on this, it's not super detailed because I am not a professional painter. But, you know, you can, you can at least see the detail of the miniature. I definitely suggest uh, getting this game. I never even played it yet. I don't know how to play this game yet. But it's Star Wars and that's why I got it because I love Star Wars. So that's Princess Leia there. You can see pretty simple paint job, gray boots white jumpsuit and a black gun Woo! and if you didn't notice like all, mostly all of my heroes in this i had them distinguishable because there are a certain type of gray paint that i painted so then when i'm playing i know which ones are my heroes not that i'm not gonna be able to distinguish between them anyhow so let's go on so that was princess i get this is just a showcase video to show you some of the miniatures that you get into the the core game, the Imperial Assault core game, as well as the box games, or the expansion boxes too as well. So Princess Leia, she actually comes from, uh, I think it was a blister pack that I got her. I don't think I got her on one of the core expansions. Speaking of that actually, when you purchase the game, you can actually buy blister packs of separate characters. Not all of them, but some of them. Some of them you have to buy the expansion packs. But you know what I mean. Let's go on. You can't talk about Princess, Princess Leia without the love of her life, which is Han Solo, which you can see right here. And his sidekick, his best bud in the whole entire universe, Chewbacca, the Wookiee. So Chewbacca was really fun. You can see there's, because of all the fur texture and everything onto him, you know, it was pretty easy. You put the base coat onto it, or what I did is I put the base coat onto him. And then I did some wet blending and, you know, a little bit of dry brush here and there to just to get a little bit of different tonal value for Chewbacca. Again, I am no professional painter by no means, so don't take any of this like, hey, this is how you're supposed to paint these miniatures because I have no clue. I just, you know, 
I looked up tutorials on YouTube and, on, and I Googled images from the original, the, the videos, the movies and everything. So hopefully I'm kind of giving a little bit of justice to the game. So you can see the base. Whoa, there's Chewbacca just fell down. Pick him up again. So you can see I gave him a little bit of customization to the base. Some videos I've seen online that they actually cut them off of the base and they gave them all custom bases, which is really cool. But I didn't have time for that. I wanted to get it done so I can start shooting. It took me a long time to paint these. And hand Solo, too. I'm kind of rambling on and on and not giving spaces in between what I'm talking about. Sorry about that. That's why I talk most of the time when I ramble. So let's continue on, shall we? So hand Solo, you can see, pretty basic. For, from uh, Star Wars and Empire Strikes Back, this is kind of like what his attire was. But Empire Strikes Back, it was more into the Hoth, which was like a wintry wasteland. Well, not a wasteland, but a winter planet. So he kind of had all of his winter gear on too as well. So it's been more like just Star Wars, A New Hope. And Return of Jedi too as well. So that is Chewbacca. I can't make Chewbacca noises and Han Solo. Let's continue on. You can see this is Luke Skywalker. And he is kind of into his garb that when you've seen him in Star Wars A New Hope. You know, tan pants, his white top, and he got his blaster gun. No lightsaber as of yet. It's not even in focus. There we go. So no lightsaber on this miniature as of yet. So that is Luke Skywalker from Star Wars A New Hope. I'm going to place him down there. And then you can see Luke Skywalker with his, his lightsaber. And this one is from Return of the Jedi. He's dressed in his black Jedi garb. You can see he's got his glove on because in Empire Strikes Back, you know, he, he kind of got his arm destroyed or his hand destroyed, I should say. Interesting. I really, really like these miniatures. They were, again, brought me back to a childhood state when I was painting them, and I giggled a little bit like a child, like, eee, Star Wars, eee. You can see Ben Kenobi, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and this is from Star Wars New Hope. You can see he's got his Jedi, he got his garb. Like, the detail in these miniatures are really cool. My paint job isn't really giving them the the hype that they deserve because the they're totally great quality miniatures you gotta do a little bit of cleaning up of the lines and everything else but all in all i really like the miniatures and just to show you this is the color that the hero miniatures come in it's a tan color and that's it for ben kenobi Ooh, ben star wars the best friends in the entire universe. C-3PO and R2-D2. That's right. This is really interesting to paint this because with C-3PO, what I did to paint this is I actually didn't use any gold paint. I just, I painted it like a metallic paint, the silver. Lead belcher, if I'm not mistaken. And then I did like a, a Reclan flesh tone. Again, all these miniatures are painted with Citadel paints by Games Workshop, I think is the name of it, yeah. But because I put the shade onto him, then, you know, it kind of changes like a dirty gold. You know, one thing I like doing when I paint my miniatures is I like giving them character, as in, I don't want to make them all clean and pristine looking because if they're in battle, you know, you want my impersonation, my impression, I should not impersonation, my impression of this is that when you see the characters, they've been in battles already, so they're battle hardened, they're dirty, they're scarred, and so on and so on. So I like painting them like this. Anybody else who likes a painting like this, please just comment down below. And by all means, you can email me pictures of your Imperial Assault painting, so I'd love to see them. And my email address, or the Board Game Maniacs email address is boardgamemaniacs at gmail.com. Email me the photos because I would love to see some pictures of the paintings that you did for Imperial Assault. And you can see here, this guy, he's a little messy because he's been kind of beat up. He's been gone through the war a lot more. You can see he's all nice and dirty. He's not very shiny anymore for poor R2-D2. But hey, I had a lot of fun painting these. Let's go on and let's look at one more of the 
main hero characters, then we'll look at like the core and expansion heroes. Just briefly though. This is Lando Calrissian. He is from Cloud City. He's the governor or I don't know if he's the governor. I don't know what he is, but he's one of the like parliament guys or uh, political guys from Cloud City. You can see here again, I'm not a great professional. I'm not even a professional painter. I'm not a great painter by no means. You can see there's a lot of mistakes here. So please don't laugh at them. Again, this is just a showcase of the detail of the miniatures. You can see I tried to give a little bit of uh, fanciness of the inside of his cloak right here. And on the back end here, there's some highlights, contours, shadows. It kind of looks a little messy because I did kind of mess him up a little bit. But board game maniacs, I'm not going to show everything on nice, clean and pristine. We just show you as it is and leave it for people to comment and say, hey, you suck at painting. Don't do it anymore. Don't do any showcases or, you know, it's okay. So, you know, I'd like to hear what the comments are for this, but that's Lando Calrissian. Great detail, I have to say, for the miniature itself. And you can have so much fun painting these miniatures, because I certainly did. You can see here, these are three Wookiee warriors. Now, uh, the main guy in the core box set is this guy right here. I'm just looking through the cards here to find out what his name is, because it's, you know, it could be important to know. And it's a uh, Garkin. That's right. So he's a fierce warrior Garkin. Now, when you do buy the core box set or any of the expansion packs, you do get the character cards and explains all the stats and everything. This video is not about the stats of each character. It is not going into the tutorial. I have to learn to play the game before I do a video such as that. This again is just a simple showcase video to show you what the miniatures look like. So again, Garkin, he's kind of like one of the main guys in the core box. And then you have two of the Wookiee warriors in there too as well. Mm -hmm. Continuing on with the heroes, uh, talking about this one, in or this one specifically right here, that is none other than local Canola. He's a deadly marksman. I'd, I'd probably say the name's wrong, but just take a look at him. Really cool looking miniature, really detailed. And you can see I probably messed up on the highlights a little bit. Uh, I like the way the jacket turned out, I have to say that. Yay, jacket! Yeah, that's right, yeah. Oop, I almost knocked him over. So, next would be Fen Cygnus. He's a hardened veteran. This guy right here, that's Fen Cygnus, and then you'll have this girl right here, which is Saskatech. She's a brilliant engineer. And then we have uh, Mur Morny Rin. He's a master of intelligence. I kind of like the way, how I painted him. Oh, getting focused. Here. There you go. So I really liked, you know, his paint job. He's a, like a, Hammerhead, I guess you could call him. He's pretty cool. You can find all these online and you can always go to fantasyflightgames.com and you can see them too as well, as well as purchase them because I can't wait to play this game. I'm sure this game is gonna rock just like all the other Fantasy Flight games. Again, I'm not gonna go in super detail about these characters, show every one of them off. We're gonna stop this video shortly with the heroes and go on to the empire. But just to show you a couple other things. So the lady with the blue cape, which is right here, she is uh, Shayla Verad. She's the daughter of Matalor. Mm. I'm just reading these off the cards again. I can probably, I'm probably saying the names wrong, so sorry about that. This guy here, I had a hard time trying to find out who the heck he is, because I looked, couldn't find him. You don't really have a specific character card, but you just have like the small information cards. And he is an alliance smuggler. See, I wrote the names onto the bottoms of them just so I can remember for myself. He was probably one of the last miniatures that I painted. It was a lot of fun to paint. You can see variation into his vest that he wears. Now, originally, 
from the pictures that I found online with him, he had sleeves and there was like a gold trim that went down, but I kind of changed the look of him up just a little bit, just because it made it more easier for me. And that is the Alliance Smuggler. This girl right here, that is Jin Ordain. I do know that she does come into the core box set for the Imperial Assault. She's a sly smuggler. Ugh. And she's beside the other smuggler, Alliance Smuggler and Sly Smuggler. And last but not least, right here, I'll pull him up close because he was probably one of the whoops, one probably one of the easiest miniatures that I've painted in this game. Come on, keep south. Stop trying to jump out of my hands. There we go. And he is the MDH-19. He's a loyal medic. So he's a medic robot, you can see. Pretty simple, lead belcher, some wash, and then I just do a little bit of highlights onto him. And, you know, kind of painted the, uh, the wires, a little bit of red wires in his eyes too as well. And that is it for him. Now, like I said, I can go and keep going on and on and on about all of the heroes for this game. But I'm not going to do that because I don't want to bore you and I don't want to make this video like super long. As if you can't tell already, this is a build up to when I play Imperial Assault. Now, it's on to the Empire. That's right, Imperial, the Empire. And as you can see, the collection that I have of the heroes that I just showed and the collection that I have of the Imperials are the bad guys, which include the Empire and the Scum and Villainy is a lot larger and more vast than what we have for the heroes. Hmm, do I like the evil side of things? Maybe. Let's go for a closer look at some of these miniatures. You know that we have to start this off with the head honcho or the boss. Even though like Emperor Palpatine or the Emperor is like the boss, but in the movie, spoiler alert, if you didn't see the movies, go watch them because they're incredible. Darth Vader ends up just taking out the em Emperor in the end. And he, you know, said, he agrees and he finally realizes that the Jedi is the way of life. He goes back to the Jedi because he was Anakin Skywalker at first, which is none other than Luke Skywalker's father. But he converted over to the dark side. Watch the movie after it. But this is Darth Vader, aka Anakin Skywalker. He is the the head Sith Lord. You can see he's all in his black armor. I didn't paint him black. I painted them like a dark gray and then some highlights of white and everything because I've been told you don't want to paint black, black, essentially. You got to kind of, you know, just give a little bit of variation to the tone, but I'm no professional painter. You can see the back of his cloak. I probably could have highlighted better with some of the, the white for all of the wrinkles in the cloak, but I'll know. This is Darth Vader. I had fun painting him. I hope you enjoy him. For tabletop quality well i think he's tabletop quality you may think he's lower than that but again i'm no professional painter leave me alone and with darth vader you do have the imperial officers so you see one right here two three which is all the way over here so the Imperial officers they're in the same pose the quality is pretty cool onto them for the sculpt now, what I did just to differentiate between them is I kind of painted them different tones. You can do whatever way you paint them, but that's what I did. So you can see here's an example of two of them. There we go. So light gray and then like the dark gray too as well. Just so that I can, you know, hey, you killed the light gray guy while the dark gray guy is still alive. That sort of thing, you know, because there's a lot of miniatures in this game and we want to try to keep track of everything when we're fighting them and killing them so that if you kill them, they don't want to keep coming back at you because once they're dead, they're dead. Standing beside Lord Vader is none other than the Royal Guard. Now, these Royal Guards, Guardians or Brawlers as you want to call them, they pretty much primarily 
They are broken up into guarding Darth Vader, kind of, even though Darth Vader really don't need any guards or bodyguards, but also the Emperor too as well, Emperor Palpatine. You see him in the movies a lot, they're just beside them, they're all in nice, totally red. They have their, their guns or, I don't know what you would call them, but spears, I don't know what, but anyhow, that's what they are, that's what they look like. Very, very simple miniatures to paint, I have to say. I just, you know, based them all in red, did some shade, did a little bit of highlight onto them, painted their staffs or their guns or their weapon, I should say. And then that was it, they were pretty simple. We have to talk a little bit about the villain heroes. When I say heroes, they're villains but they're like main villains, I should say. So you can see here, starting from left to right, we have Darth Maul. He was very interesting to paint because I had to paint his tattoos all on his body. And the miniatures aren't huge, they're not big, so you know, it took a little bit more effort to paint them. He was a lot of fun. He's one of my favorite characters into the Star Wars universe. This is show the little back there too as well. But he is not my favorite, he is one of my favorites because, you know, he's Sith. He's the Dark Jedi, I guess you could say. Really cool, I really enjoyed painting him. It was a little bit of a challenge. I didn't mess up his uh, body tattoos too bad, I hope. Hope you enjoyed him. You can also see, uh, I'm skipping this guy for now, I'll talk to him shortly, but let's talk about him right here, which is Bosk. In the game Imperial Assault, Bosk is a hunter, a brawler. You know, Bosk was, was originally seen in Empire Strikes Back, and I think what Bosk, the first time you've seen him is when Han Solo was being frozen in carbonite, if I'm not mistaken. But anyhow, Bosk was a lot of fun to paint, and he is part of the uh, Trandoshan Hunters. I'm just looking at the card here. So he's kind of like that kind of species, I guess you could call him. But that's the hero villain, Bosk. Next to Bosk on the right hand side is none other than Guido. Now poor Guido, when we seen him, he had a short lived spot in the Star Wars universe because when he was in the cantina with none other than Han Solo, Han Solo shot him and killed him. Spoiler alert if you didn't see it already, but Star Wars New Hope, watch him. That's Guido. He was pretty fun to paint. Hunter, smuggler, ambitious mercenary. So that is what Guido is in the game for Imperial Assault. And I'm going off camera because I'm reading the card and not paying attention to the monitor, like usual. Finally, we're gonna talk about my famous character from the Star Wars universe my famous of all times, and that is none other than Boba Fett. He's the infamous bounty hunter. He, the funny thing about Boba Fett, I have to say is, he had a very, very brief appearance in Empire Strikes Back, but the fans loved him from Empire Strikes Back, even though he's very brief. He had a little bit more of a longer engagement in Return of the Jedi, but there was a lot of following of Boba Fett to the point that they're supposed to be making a Boba Fett movie, which I hope is true from what I read on the internet. Hopefully they're going to make Boba Fett because again, he is my favorite character in the Star Wars universe. He's not good. He's not bad. He is goes with whatever, whoever pays him the most amount of money. That is Boba Fett the Bounty Hunter. I love him. Next you see some examples of the stormtroopers. You know, stormtroopers are pretty much like the infantry of the Empire. They are what kind of goes out and fights the battles primarily before the hero villains go out. They don't get enough praise in my own opinion because without the infantry, they wouldn't have got as far as they did into the Star Wars universe from the stormtroopers. Now, I really, really have to say about painting these guys, it was a little difficult, be, again, because I'm not super skilled at painting miniatures yet, but 
I tried some that I based them out in black and then I put the white onto them and leave gaps onto the armor. I also tried the, uh, the way where I painted them all out in white and did a wash in no oil. Again, Citadel paint from Games Workshop. And then I just throw a little more highlight to clean them up a bit. Now, I don't, some of these are a little bit cleaner than others. And again, that is reflecting onto the, some of them has been more battle hardened. They've been out, they've been fighting more than what the other stormtroopers have done. So I really, 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 really like painting these. And the reason why I like painting these, number one, there was a super challenge to them. You probably look at them and say, oh, they don't really look that good. But hey, I'm happy with them, that's all it matters for me. But in any case, uh, they were challenged to me to figure out how to paint them. And number two is when you see the Star Wars movies and you see the Stormtroopers, you were just blown away, by, blown away by how many they are on the screen. Like it's crazy with the amount of Stormtroopers that they are. And they're just constantly being made over and over and over and over again, which is really cool, I have to say. I really like the Stormtroopers. They're one of my favorite characters into the Star Wars universe, but as you know, Boba Fett is my favorite. Stormtroopers is up there too as well because of the overabundant amount and the way they look. Nice and clean and white, but then when they get in battle, they can get all dirty and get all hit and everything. I'll go a little closer to show you some battle damage that I painted on these guys too. You can see just a little close up of he's kind of clean, but he does have some battle damage as you can see right there where my big finger is kind of covering. So he has been through the war. He's been, you know, dinged around a bit, shot at, kind of smoke damage and everything else. So, whoop, off camera I go. But yeah, that's a Stormtrooper with a little bit of battle damage. I really like painting these guys. Speaking of Stormtroopers, you see some of them are elevated onto some clear rods like this one right here. These are jet troopers. So they have jet packs so that they can fly around You've seen this in one of the Star Wars ones where Obi-Wan Kenobi fought him. Or no, it was Boba Fett that he fought. Or Jango Fett, sorry, my bad. I'm getting the universe all mixed up. I'm not a really good Star Wars fan, but I am a fan. Anyhow, so I painted these guys a little differently. I gave their, like, shoulder pads. Whoops. I gave their shoulder pads a different color. Just so they can be distinguished between the other stormtroopers because they're elite stormtroopers they fly around with jetpacks and again a little bit of battle damage onto them made them all a little bit of dirty they're not going to be clean because they're in battle and in war continuing on with the stormtroopers we have this is another classification of stormtroopers in the imperial assault game these are classified as heavy stormtroopers so they have more heavier weapons do a little more damage. You can see this one here, he has some battle damage. And the base, I kind of gave him some tufts of grass and some sand. So he's more out in the battlefield, you know, maybe Endor, who knows. But he is shooting it up. He's destroying more Ewoks, possibly. But heavy weapons. You can see guns are a lot bigger. He's got his pack to support all the power and energy and the ammunition that he needs. Took a little bit of depth battle damage, you can see. These were a lot of fun to paint. All Stormtroopers were a lot of fun to paint, and I love doing the battle damage, making them all grimy and dirty looking. What you're looking at now is, they're not Stormtroopers, they're Scout Troopers, I guess you could call them. In either case, they are E-Web Engineers, so they don't look like your standard Stormtroopers. You've probably seen these guys more in Return of the Jedi for on Endor, if I'm not mistaken. But these have like cannons that they're using and they're shooting. So you can see they have a lot of power. They got the ammunition right there or their generator to keep their, their gun power to shoot off a lot of damage and destroy a lot of the heroes and the Ewoks. I don't want to come across these guys in the game. I don't know what their stats are yet, but I'm scared to find out what their stats are because I'm sure they'll do a lot of damage. As you can tell, I'm getting into more and more detail about these miniatures and I'm showing more and more. I know this is just a, 
a basic brief overview of the showcase of the miniatures but again i'm a star wars fanatic i love star wars i can't help it i'm getting sucked more and more into this universe by shooting this video <sighs> but anyhow you can see there these are probe droids they were mainly seen on the planet of hoth in empire strikes back if you can recall if you've seen the movie again spoiler alert if you didn't see it and then again if you didn't see it what is wrong with you empire strikes back was awesome they landed on the planet they scattered out to see if they could find the rebel base so that they can go in and attack and destroy the rebels and queen or not queen ah princess leia was there han solo was there so on and so on so i really like painting these these were very simple just like the medical droid too as well base coat to lead belcher did a wash on them, a little bit of highlights, and they were done. And that was it, a little bit of red for the lenses and some black, but all in all, they were pretty simple to paint. Another one that I want to show here is number one, the IG-88. He is like a bounty hunter robot, you can see here. Another very simple miniature to paint. Lead belcher, wash, a little bit of highlight, he's done. And then you have the HK Assassin Droids. Now, the reason why I wanted to show these HK Assassin Droids is because I had a hard time trying to figure out who they were. I looked at them, I didn't know who they were. I'm like, I have no idea. Now, I could have just looked into the book or looked at all the cards that you get into the Imperial Assault. But at the time when I was painting them, I didn't have the cards close to me, so it took me a while to find out who they are. But they are the HK Assassin Droids. Very easy to paint. You can see that there are little color variation between the four of them that you get. So I painted the metallics and then I used different color washes to tint the metallics of lead belcher and so on. So it, give, so it gives a little bit of variation to as well. So when you're playing, you know, if you kill which one, like the orange one or the red one or the pink one or the silver one or the black one, what have you. So that is the HK Assassin Droids. You can see the slug man himself right here. Jabba the Hutt. He is a vile gangster. Smuggler, hunter, he's a leader. If you don't know who Jabba the Hutt is, watch the Star Wars universe and you will know. He reminds me of a huge slug. Very, very, very fun to paint. There was a lot of technical paint on him, I have to say. I did a lot of wet blending, which was probably the first time I learned about wet blending. You can see I'm just going to spin him around here. Show off a little bit of his back where the wet blending for the, the gradation between dark to light. Oh, I had a lot of fun. I learned a lot from painting this miniature. And I'm glad I did because the next guy I'm going to show you, I kind of transitioned from painting Jabba the Hutt over to this next miniature with so much wet blending. It's insane. The miniature I'm talking about, none other than Rancor. He is in Return of the Jedi. It is one where Luke is dropped into the pit by none other than Jabba the Hutt to try to be assassinated or killed by Rancor, this big creature. So this creature, he's a brawler. And like I said before, I'm glad I did Jabba the Hutt before I did Rancor because it taught me about wet blending, which is very important if you want to get the subtle gradation between the different tones. I'm not no professional painter like I keep saying, but it was a lot of fun. It was a big learning experience that I did with this guy. He is huge. He's a monster. Let's spin him around and show you the back of him right there. So you can see the, the general gradation like I did for the wet blending. It's a lot of fun to paint this guy, I have to say. Now, when I say he's a big guy, like he's a big monster. If we put, like, let's find Luke Skywalker and let's put him beside him and you can see the difference in the size and he's going to move the uh, tripod a bit, zoom out with the camera, get the Wampa out of the way, Jabba the Hut. Yeah, look at the size difference between these two, like this is crazy. and. Again, I don't know if this here is exactly the scale as the size of a human as opposed to the Rancor, but in the movie, he's incredibly large. It's really cool. What happens in the scene? I'm not going to try to spoil any much more, but that is the Rancor. 
A lot of fun painting them. I learned a lot of stuff by doing the wet blending for this guy right here. Second last miniature that I want to show you is the Banta Raider. So he is mounted by a Tuscan Raider, which is also known as the Sand People. But this was kind of their primary modes of transportation, living transportation, I should say, in the Star Wars universe is the Banta. Banta, I should say, not Banta. Banta. The Banta Raider. You can see nice detail. Again, I used a wet blending process for changing like the, the tonal values from dark to light when I was painting this guy. I had a lot of fun painting him too as well. I did him after Rancor too as well and after Jabba the Hutt. I learned a lot from this guy and it was a lot of fun painting him. Brought me back to my childhood. I love it. Last but not least, for the miniatures, again, there's so many more miniatures I can keep talking about, but I don't want this video to be like 10 hours long, longer than the Star Wars movies themselves if you combine them all together. But this big robotic menace right here, you see, is none other than the ATST. This is a vehicle, it's a heavy weapon vehicle. This was used in a lot of the Star Wars movies. It is a two man robotic vehicle it is really big it did a lot of devastation in the movies you can see a lot of it in uh the return of the jedi another name for it that was called was a scout walker because it scouted ahead it was a two-legged thing and it did a lot of devastation because of the cannons and the weapons it had and it was heavily armored a lot of fun painting this i love doing weathering on miniatures and I, I don't know how much more, what more I can say about this. I get a hiccup, excuse me. Um, I like, as I said before, dirting up miniatures to try to help tell the story about the battle that they had and everything else. So with him, I did, like, he was pretty easy to paint, I have to say, you can see the head swivels too as well. But he was easy to paint, I painted him gray. I don't know what color gray in the Citadel paint line, but I painted him like a light gray, did more highlights onto him, and I did a lot of heavy washes to make him look really dirty, because this guy's been in a lot of battles, did a lot of destruction, killed a lot of rebels, destroyed a lot of Ewoks, and everything like that. And that is the ATST. A lot of fun painting this guy. That is my total collection that I have for Imperial Assault by Fantasy Flight Games. If you would like to see battle reports in the 2019 of this game, please comment down below. Let me know that you would like to see some battle reports. Let me know if you would like to see the app take over, because what I'm hoping to do with this one again is I'm hoping to do a solo mission where I control the heroes and I use the app to control all of the Empire or the Imperial to try and take out the heroes as we battle out an Imperial Assault. This game is again created by Fantasy Flight Games. You can Google Fantasy Flight Games, you can go to the website, you can purchase this game and oodles and oodles and oodles of expansions for this. Again, I'm missing two expansions and probably a lot of blister packs for this. But what's really cool about this is when you download the app, which is free, and you play it, you just tell the app what expansions and blister packs you do have when you're gonna play the game, and it just tells you how to lay the tiles there and everything else. In the future, we'll see what I'm talking about. I just, again, wanted to do just a very brief showcase. It's not so brief though, because it kind of gets stuck into the Star Wars universe. A happy stuck, I should say, because I love Star Wars. And I am so excited to play this game and also in the future to play the Star Wars Legion game, which is an expansion of this. It's not an expansion. It's a standalone game, Star Wars Legion, but it's a tabletop game. I cannot wait to do that, but I'm going to give it a little bit of a break between the Star Wars and Parallel painting or just the Star Wars painting, because as you can see, I did a lot of painting as of so far, hopefully. I'm probably going to pick up the other expansions as time goes on and paint them. But this was a lot to paint. A lot for me for somebody who is an inexperienced painter. And I'm not that fast at painting. It took me a long time again because between painting 
and shooting other games and you know keeping up with the YouTube channel and the Twitch channel and so on. So I hope you enjoyed this, this showcase video, the last video for 2018. I do have an announcement of what's going to happen with Board Game Maniacs in 2019. Go on to the YouTube channel or the Facebook channel, check out the announcement for 2019 and what we are planning on doing for Board Game Maniacs. That's right. I cannot wait. This is just a build up and we're expanding more and more and more because of you, the viewers. I appreciate all the love, all the comments, all the shares, all the likes that everyone is doing and all of the people who have subscribed to Board Game Maniacs that are supporting us from the Patreon account who are doing a one-time donation onto the Streamlabs account too as well. All the links are in the description below if you want to take part of that or even if you just want to subscribe and watch the videos and be entered into continuous draws where you can win free stuff from Board Game Maniacs. And that's it. So, safe travels on the holiday season. Happy holidays. You know, if you are going to drink alcohol, be very safe, be very considerate. You know, don't overdo it. Have a drink for me for board, and for all the other maniacs of board game maniacs. You know, that, you know the thing. Just, just be safe out there, regardless of the holidays or not. So until next time, board game maniacs, you know what I'm going to say. And that is, play Star Wars! Yeah, that's right. And most importantly of all, communication is key. Playing games, in life, everything else. So until next time, Board Game Maniacs. Be a maniac! Woo! Hope you enjoyed that video. If you want to keep up to date with Board Game Maniacs, click on the like and subscribe button to be notified when more videos come available. If you want to become an official sponsor of Board Game Maniacs, go to patreon.com slash boardgamemaniacs. Or you can go to streamlabs.com slash boardgamemaniacs1. That's right, and you can donate to help keep the lights on, keep food in our bellies, and play more games. We'll purchase more games, more equipment to make Board Game Maniacs evolve and get bigger and larger because of you, the viewers. I thank you from the bottom of my toes to the top of my head for all of your support. And until next time, board game maniacs, be a maniac.